King of Hammers, for me, when when we enter the lake bed, we usually get there about uh, a, a week early, like before race week. Kind of go into it realizing that we're going to be busy the whole entire time. Get up about 7 every day, go to bed about 2.30 every day in the morning. It would take so, some long hours. We never have everything completely finished before we get out there. I mean, we could start 10 years ago and we still wouldn't have everything finished by the time we got there. I actually enjoy it quite a bit because you're out there, there's not really anything else to do besides eat and work, so you might as well stay busy working. And Kyle does a pretty good job about keeping us busy. Once we get something done and, and I want to go test it, I'll go test it. It's already feeling a little better. Yeah, I ain't breaking my neck. It's way better. Way better. I feel like that's even better. I think so. Well, that's better. We can at least do something with that. Yeah. When stuff isn't working right, like my stress levels are through the roof. Taking shocks off or working on something and... Something I went out and pre-ran and it was good and then a couple days later I'd drive it again and it's bad and it's like, I don't know if it's just mind games or what. It's like horrible. Really? Yeah, I, I'm just gonna fucking maybe take the shocks exactly how they back from how they were. I can't race like that. Uh, yeah. Well, King of the Hammers is always a lot of fun, and it's always kind of hectic. And I get questioned all the time, like, why aren't you out there? Like, well, I work on my vehicle at the shop, so I don't have to work on it here. I don't push the limits crazy hard because I don't want to tear it up. I don't want to break it, so then I don't have to fix it. I'm glad to help Kyle and these guys. I've provided some parts they didn't have, which kind of surprises me that I actually have. I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of, it, out of helping people, kind of snaking in them extra parts or tools that they might think are pretty cool. I think that's a cool factor. I'm loving the new car, but I'm seeing there's a, a lot of a learning curve to it to get it to do what they want it to. So I'll let them run it this year. I'll take notes, and then next year I can. Same thing, roll it, out of the, roll it out of the trailer and it's ready to rip. Yeah. I learned from y'all, thank you very much. You know, you try to set your car up and everything for what you think the track's gonna be and then it changes and, you know, your suspension changes, tire pressures change, I mean, ride heights change, I mean, just, and then trying to find enough time in the day to go out and pre-run and, you know, make sure you know the track and make sure your co-pilot knows the GPS and knows the track and, Free running isn't, isn't just looking at the track, it's also testing your car and equipment. So we try to make the pre-runners as close as we can to the race cars. Yeah, so we found out you know, running 35s, a lot of people haven't had any issues, but when you're running you know, 80 plus miles an hour through the desert, come to find out that a soft rock tire starts to stretch out a little bit and was creating some issues rubbing against the where the ball joints are at and the knuckle and really dragging the car down. So, you know, it's a noticeable difference not being able to get the car up to its full potential in the desert. We had to deal with that issue and figure out what we could do to eliminate that from happening during the race, and we did end up figuring that out, so it worked out good. Doesn't matter how much prep you get beforehand, once you get there, there's always something to do uh, from suspension testing or just you know, downright repairs on the cars. We're, we're busy the whole time we're out there. Just making sure everything gets done the right way and on time to where the car can be tested and come back and get looked over again and get ready to go to the start line in the morning. A prologue this year of the 
desert race is like a 35 mile qualifier. That 35 miles is also added to your next day's time. It's pretty much just an early qualifier with the ability to you know to have some adjusted time on your side so it's very important and you definitely want to start out front we had some issues in the prologue i uh you know went a little too hard early I tried to save it, yeah. like we did. But I think it broke the steering shaft or something. Really? Yeah. That was fun. Lieutenant Dan's mad. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, we were doing good. I waited a little longer. A little more patient. The bushes out there, I figured I could just run them over. And uh, I tried to run this bush over, and you know, apparently it, it didn't want me to run it over. And it flipped us on our lid, and we ended up uh, getting it back uprighted and I went to take off and I had no steering. Ended up breaking a steering component. Made it. Six hours later. your service. Thank you. Yeah. Lieutenant Dan lost his leg. Yeah. He made us use ours. That issue would have been an issue if it didn't arise when it did. I'm thankful that it happened when it did. That way we came up with a solution, tested it the following day, and made sure it was going to work for the ETV race. So it's actually a blessing in disguise that it happened when it did. And thankfully, he went and did the desert race because we were running the same parts on the race car, and we were able to find out early on in the week that we had to address the issues that had come up. So during the actual race, you know, we, we did the race the next day. We started, uh, you know, in the back of the pack. All right, Cash, what's the game plan? So we're going to go out. We're going to race this thing from the back to the front and not hit bushes. Ooh. That's a good plan. It's solid. Hell, they're gonna be done by the time we start. I know. Because Phil. Yep. All right, don't suck. Don't suck today. Watch these ruts right here. Sleeping right. Medium left. Be patient. Sonny to the right. And when we took off, we didn't know that when I wrecked the day prior, that it had messed something up in the four wheel drive. We'll get him on the split. This thing just doesn't feel like it's shifting, right? It's not right. Really? Yeah. It's not right. Stay ready. This thing's definitely acting weird. Yeah. Not really stuck. It don't feel right. You know what? Less is in fucking two wheel drive because the fucking smart lock's not working. Say what? I bet it's in two wheel drive. 
Really? Yep. I guarantee it. I don't think the front desk is pulling. So we just used it as, as another pre-run lap and we came in from the race and um, we only did one lap in the desert, you know, since we only had two wheel drive and we spent the rest of the day in the rocks. <laughs> oh, sorry not to break. Now you climbed it here last year during qualifying, right? Huh? You climbed here during qualifying last year. Yeah, we were going here last year. We did I did everybody took this one last year. Yeah, but that's right now. nasty. A little bit worse than normal? Huh? A little bit worse than usual? Yeah, it's getting nasty right there. I got fat. Huh? Yeah, it did. The parts held up fine. He went to the rocks, pre-ran the rocks, made sure everything was solid, come back. We looked over the car and we made the same changes to his race car, which thankfully he did that race because if not, it's hard to say if we would have found the issue before he took the green flag on the, the UTV race and then we would have just been a few miles in and, you know, not had any results to show for all the hard work we put in. We pretty much used that desert race as a, you know, an early race practice anyway. You know, that race, you know, doesn't matter as much to me, um, you know, so we kind of used it to prepare the R for the rock race. and. Um, yeah, I, I think our failure in that race definitely helped us um, in the rock race because, you know, who knows, we could have made it through the rock race, but we made changes to what broke. So when we first got there, um, you know, me and Cash went out in the pre-runner and, uh, jumped off back door perfect, like hit the first ledge perfect, second ledge perfect, didn't bottom out, it doubled both ledges perfect. I'm like, man, that, that was awesome. So the next time we had, you know, time to do it when no one was around, you know, I went and got Blake, my camera guy, and, uh, had him film it. It actually went really bad. car um, downshifted on me and it, it didn't have the mile an hour and and uh, rpm to get me off the ledge so it really sent the the front end down which it still made it you know that was pretty much the worst of the worst that we thought was going to happen so pretty much for qualifying you know i was going to do it no matter what i told a couple people and it was pretty tough to keep it a secret for for that long because i knew once people started figuring out that i jumped down back door then 
they were going to go try it too and you know i wanted to keep that one in my back pocket because i knew that was going to be a good time saver for qualifying i didn't even tell austin he had no idea until we were there he was pissed <laughs> yeah i found out you know a couple days before we were going to do the qualifying loop kyle asked me if i wanted to tell austin and i said now we shouldn't tell him both of them just kind of looked at each other and laughed and like austin wouldn't even believe what lieutenant dan did and I'm just sitting here thinking about like, what could he have possibly done to that car? And then the whole time, you know, we get out there and I still, I just couldn't put it together. And then you know, Kyle had brought it up once and Jeb's like, oh yeah, that's old news. He's like, check this out. It's pretty impressive. So, you know, maybe one day I'll be in the, the cool kids club. The qualifying run we ended up winning you know we we won by almost 20 seconds in the qualifying run i think that was definitely very time saving um you don't have to check up and crawl down a hill i mean at the end of the day in qualifying it's all about your time it's just like i tell little kids it's a motocross track there's seconds everywhere you just gotta pick them up people leaving seconds all over the track sleep it all on them grab some seconds here there's 20 seconds on that hill and just scooped him up, put him in his pocket and kept on trucking. Plus there's probably should be a bonus for jumping that. Like you get a tie oh, back yeah. automatically. Yeah, yeah. You automatically win because of that. There's extra seconds, extra time. I mean, I'd have got out of the corner and said, well, that's how daddy does it. The years pass, I kind of, you know, I'd go out and look at the qualifying loop, but I guess I didn't take it that serious. I spent more of my time free running the actual track than I did the qualifying loop. And I feel like the last couple of years it hurt me. I mean, I still have been finishing in the top 10. Like last year we were like third and the year before we were like seventh, you know, we had a flat tire, but we haven't been, you know, on the top spot. And, you know, I kind of give that to not spending as much time looking at the qualifying course and really figuring out what's going to separate a good guy from a great guy uh, on the qualifying course. So this year, you know, me and Cash spent a lot of time on the qualifying course. We walked a lot of it. We went and looked at backdoor. Cash is probably really the one that got me to jump it. I was looking at it and, you know, we were both looking at it together and, and you know, he peer, peer pressured me into jumping it pretty much. So um, I did it the first time, you know, I made sure no one was there when we did it because I didn't want anybody to know. Um, this was before race week. This was like uh, three weeks before race week. You know, we were doing our last little bit of testing, and you know, I heard we were going to be qualifying down back door. So we jumped it, and uh, everything went good. Cody, what do you got to say about Kyle's dance moves out there? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like I got cheated on, to be honest with you. Got cheated on. <laughs> Usually he dances with me. Came out here and danced by himself. Keeping secrets. Yeah, my heart hurts. <laughs> I invited y'all to come with me. I even said I have room in the trailer, Hunter. I will stop if you meet me in Oklahoma City. And he's like, oh, no, we got that much stuff to do. All right. Last time I ever take Hunter's advice. Everything has its goods and bads and sometimes you have to decide if the good overcomes the bad or vice versa and, you know saying it didn't work out then you know there's always that chance to start in the back of the pack but you know pros versus cons it seemed like the, the positives outweighed the negatives and it happened to work out pretty well yeah so uh my co-pilot this year um, was Cash LaCroix. Cash LaCroix. Hey, uh, hey guys. He, uh, he's from Alabama. He's uh, just a little kid. I think he's 15 or 16 years old. Scotty couldn't do it with me this year. You know, he's done it, shoot, since we started. And, uh, you know, he, uh, with his health, and you know, he had an accident, and he just wasn't able to do it. We're racing today. You win. I'm going to ride, and I'm going to... Be that gum, and I'm gonna have to pee, and then I'm gonna be miserable. But we're gonna win. I'll let you at the chocolate monkey, but I will. I don't really want to win nowhere else. You can't wear it. You can't. I'm still wearing your fire suit. Yeah, like over. I know you can just put it on backwards. 
It's like when you're sitting there, put it on backwards. That way you can take it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you can read a GPS. <laughs> it took you long enough. <laughs> you know, after winning, you know, three years in a row, you know, you would think I have like a target on my back and, and it would be more pressure, but I really don't because I just feel so at home out there. And, and every year I'm out there, you know, I know more, I put in more effort, I know what it takes. So, you know, when I'm out there testing and tuning and driving, when I line up to the line, like in my head, I don't think anybody can beat me. Well, <clears throat> we gotta wait another hour because uh, transponders don't work. Imagine that. It could possibly rain now and slash, now we just gotta stand here for an hour or two. That's, 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 that's the worst part. That's the worst part is waiting. I like to wait. Very impatient, this guy. Mm -hmm. I so never would guess. Waiting in line sucks. We're going to be patient today though, aren't we? Yep. Patience. Sure. Patience mm. wins the race. You know, with the good qualifier, we got to start out front. Um, we ended up getting the whole shot, checking out, having a good run through the desert. Kyle Cheney and Ronnie Anderson off the line, headed out onto their first of two laps. But right there, that is our current race leader, Mr. Kyle Cheney. Kyle just looks like he's out for a Sunday drive and he's probably going 80 miles an hour right there. Car is super smooth. He's running big old uh, 35 inch tires this year. He's in the uh, pro mod class. Again, Kyle is our current race leader, physical. start the race and you're just sitting there waiting you got an idea of how long that first lap takes and you're just waiting and you know you started on the front row so he should be the first one you see and still you know nothing on the radio you kind of try to keep up with the uh, the live tracking but sometimes that doesn't always work so it's definitely you know high anxiety and uh, definitely test your patience out started raining uh, once we were back in the desert and uh, I knew I wanted to get to the rocks as fast as I could so I did the desert as fast as I could we came in get fuel change the front tires Kyle Cheney three-time king back to back to back is in here they're actually going to change front tires because these arms are so close that going fast through the desert, they rub a little bit. But this Can-Am Maverick R is an absolute beautiful machine. It looks like it's, it doesn't even look like he's ran lap one yet. This thing is absolutely perfect. Complete focus, absolute laser vision by Kyle Cheney. And again, this just this car looks absolutely amazing out here. Looks like the fuel is done. They're covered up. Cash looks good. Kyle's looking great. And the car is looking even better. And look at that. Kyle Cheney just calm, cool, and collected and laser, laser focused. In and out in just a couple minutes. What a great, great hit. Uh, we changed the front tires, you know, just because I, I wanted to uh, 
a little more of a rock tire for the rock section. So we used a tire that I thought was better in the desert for the first half. We stopped in the pit, just changed the fronts for the, uh, for the rock part. I think what helps us in the pits the most is having the same people trying to do the same job every time. That way they're well practiced in it. Not getting involved in each person's job. Do your job and if they need help, they'll ask you. But other than that, let them do their job because then you get too many people in one spot and things go slower than what they already are. It's just repetition. So if you have the same people doing the same thing every time, it's a lot more, you know, it's a better chance of everything going smoothly. This is always kind of a sketchy part going the opposite direction because it's kind of you're up on a ridge. So yeah, we, we ended up going into the rocks first. You know, hadn't rained in the rocks yet. We end up getting about halfway through the rocks and I get a flat. So we get to the bottom of Jackhammer and uh, we end up changing the flat. Fish Both of it. them out. So Cash LaCroix is his uh, co-dog. Looks like they're fighting uh, a lot of these jacks that you're watching right now that uh, use the impact to run the jack up. It grabs the lower mm -hmm. A-arm. End up having a problem uh, with my impact. It, it wouldn't, it didn't like to, to work. I thought the battery was dead, and you know, that was the only way I could get the car up. Yeah, it looks like yeah. they, now they've got it up high enough. Probably going to pull the tire off. Well, getting the flat off is one thing, but getting a new tire on that's not flat might be another. And then the other issue, uh, as we talked about before, we watched uh, Brock change his flat early. So we're speculating that we're going to see him into remote two to get a spare. But Kyle now doesn't have a spare. We ended up getting it up, changing the flat, getting back in. We still had the lead at this point. I didn't know where anybody else was, but you know, I knew we had some tougher sections to go. So, you know, I wanted to change that, that flat pretty quick. So we ended up getting the flat changed, still had the lead. Right before I get to remote pit two, before outer limits and spooners, it starts raining. And then I get another front right flat. Instead of stopping to change my flat, I had a tire spine in it, which, you know, is only, it's pretty much like a, an inner liner, but it only measures uh, like 25 inches. So when it goes flat, it's just enough to not let it hit the rim and, and it's foam. So it breaks down after time. Um, so I knew that, you know, with that, I can at least possibly get down outer limits and up spooners before I have to change a tire because, you know, with the rain started coming down, I didn't want to be stuck in there, you know, in the rain. And I didn't know how bad these rock trails get in the rain. I've never drove them in the rain. So that was my 
um, philosophy for not stopping and changing that tire. And you know, we were going down outer limits, it starts pouring, um, coming up spooners. By the time we got the top of spooners, the tires, it's starting to wear down on that on that inner liner. But you know, we were only 10 miles from, from, from the finish and you know, I kind of weighed my options of how long it was gonna take us to change the tire and how much time I would lose to get to the finish line. And I figured it would be faster if I just lift it to the line, then I stopped and changed the tire, which, uh, you know, who knows if it was or not, but, you know, it was enough to, you know, to still win the race. So Kyle, from here, Kyle's got desert, and then he's got to come down resolution, down back door, and he'll be back in Hammertown. So far, Kyle has just put on a clinic today. He's put on a clinic for the last four years. Well, that too. Yeah, you can out. see that front right tire digging in a little bit more. Doesn't look all the way flat, though. That's a great shot right there. And you can really see that tire flexing. Doesn't look like he's slowing down much. <laughs> yeah. I've been asked a bunch of times about who, like, who I think are the, the good racers and the best racers and that kind of thing. And I've, I, watching Kyle Cheney both do what he did in the qualifying, both having the skill in the car and then the, the presence to do it then. Um, do it consistently the way he has and the way he's just honed everything is it's incredible to watch that's the spot right there that a couple guys rolled so he uh he handled that fine the first couple years i was very weary like I thought we just got lucky when we when we won these races. Like, oh man, we got lucky. Oh man, we got lucky again. But the more I'm out there, the more I come accustomed with everything and, and realize what it takes to actually win and the speed and you know the way to keep your car together, which that's the big thing. Keeping your car together for the whole race is that's what wins the race. Uh, CT Race Works built the car and you know, this, you know, you look at it, you think it's a fully built machine, but I mean, they only had a month of the build. It's just a cage, suspension and arms. And, I mean, it's basically just stock stuff. Can't even really knock that ball. Are your pants wet? No, but I'm so ready to go, babe. You held it the whole time. I did. I'm so proud of myself. Did you have to pee the whole time? Yes. <laughs> right, when, right when we took off. Immediately, I got a thing. That's impressive. So, uh, we just do you just expect him to win every year at this point, or <laughs> I don't know if I would say it's expected. Do I want to win every year as a team? Absolutely. I don't know about the rest of the team. That's pretty much what I think about all year long is King Hammers. It's definitely one well earned on the whole team as a you know the team as a whole the amount of work that goes into this i think every one of us goes out there and expects nothing less than a win but sometimes you know results are out of your control so i guess yeah one way or another it's expected e easy it's definitely not easy i mean you know king of hammers is, is the toughest single day race pretty much in any class you race i mean everybody wants to be the king and and even if the race was easy which it's not you know you're still racing against the top guys in the world so you add the hardest race in the world against the toughest competition in the world um yeah and to win it four years in a row i'd i guess i don't think about it much because after i win i'm already on to the next race so i guess it doesn't matter to me it's just it's just a race i want to win because all the guy all the top guys are there like i want to compete against all the top guys you know and and be able to compete for wins you know wherever we go and i guess it's hard to to tell somebody that it doesn't mean that much to me but i think about my losses way more than i think about my wins you know once i win you know i'm, I'm on to the next when i lose i'm thinking about that loss until i win Forty-four hundred. It's, it's hard for me to speak for for the Millers or, or anybody else, but you know I do it because we're already there. We're already racing the UTV, and the forty-four hundred is an unlimited class. So you know our 
UTVs, as long as they're up to safety requirements, you know, we're allowed to race it. So it's like I said before, it's, you know, we're there and the best racers, you know, in the world are, are racing the 4400 class too. So yeah, I want to do it. You know, I'm not just going to go home when there's another race. I feel like anytime you can race against, you know, the best people in their form of racing, you know, the more you're going to learn. by 10th in the 4400 race which is pretty good you know when you know we're up against guys with you know big motors and have more mile an hour and speed than us you know through that that kind of stuff so i knew we'd get past them in the desert you know with uh with the x3 being limited you know i was only able to get like 84 85 86 mile an hour and you know these trucks and some of these other guys you know they're pushing well over 100 so I knew we were gonna be at a disadvantage in the desert. I just knew I needed to keep it together until we got to the rocks. And um, you know, I knew once we got to the rocks, we would be okay. But yeah, it's definitely tough in that X3 platform, you know, racing against, you know, higher horsepower vehicles through the desert. You wish and you were racing. Being here, that you wish you were out here. Huh? Yeah. Fucking go put a yellow fire suit on. Kyle, what you thinking this morning? Oh, uh -oh. heads clear, real confident. I think you go out there and have a good time. I trust the car. I trust Terry. Could be a good day. Going into the race. I knew the car was good. I knew it was ready for the race and was capable of winning or finishing the race and not breaking like it has in the past on the same trail at Chocolate Thunder in the past few years. I knew it, I was confident in the car, but after it comes on the radio through lap one and says the shocks are gone and had us adjust them in the pits, then I had no I had no idea why. We're a little, a little low in the front. 
And it's definitely blown through a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's definitely nasty. Ooh. I didn't have a single one of those hits all day the other day. The car went from being amazing and qualifying to that the shocks went to me absolutely shit. Literally from turn one, they were shit. So we went into the second turn um, off the short course right after the start and the front end bottomed. And me and Terry looked at each other like, what is going on? And uh, we went in the next turn and it bottomed again on the other side. And we're like, we're like this is gonna be a long day. Like this is the worst suspension we've ever drove. A little tighter. Easy. Bad when you can farm out front suspension in a corner. Tighter left on this one. Ouch. I think it's not fun to drive. Yeah, I can tell. We need to protect that front end. Man, it's a front. You can't even drive it. I know. We're going to have to. You were so excited with it after you drove it. I'm going to see if I can't find it. Get to those levers real quick. Okay. If something was blown in there from qualifying you know i i didn't have time to, to test that car at all it was good for qualifying but you know like I, said, I don't know if i blew something in the front shocks in qualifying i never had time to drive the car again until race day and uh we got in at race day and it it, it was really bad so you know we just tried to survive you know i knew if i kept pounding the front end into the ground it, we would never survive so i just slowed down to go faster, you know, and, and not destroy the car. You know, like I said before, the only way to win these races is to have a car at the end of the race. Like, if your car's busted halfway through the race, you're not winning. of the desert um you know like i said my my x3 would only do mid 80 mile an hour and these trucks would do well over 100 and you know we got rubbed a couple times in the desert where i feel like guys could have went around i definitely never held anybody up you know if they would blow their horn or whatever i'd get right out of the way i wasn't out there holding anybody up you know because i knew that we weren't competitive with the faster guys in the desert so i i just get out of their way and there was times where where we got hit uh, and it was definitely on purpose but you know, that's, that's racing. Oh my God. I'm out of horn or something. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Fucking asshole. That's that brat piece of shit. Like there's no other fucking trail here? No, it's bullshit. Yeah, there's fucking 50 trails here. No, it's bullshit. Yeah. The, the one guy that... that that hit me when we caught back up to him in the rocks. I wanted to hit him back, but uh, I'll save it for next year. Now, this is this is a, a guy that you'd like to talk about, Tom. This is 191. This is Carl Chaney. I hate to admit it, but I, he's definitely on my dark horse list. Well, this man, I mean, we, we struggle to understand how he can walk because he's, uh, yeah, let's just say he's got big ones.
Now, Kyle Chaney won the 4900 Hammers UTV Championship the other day. He knows these trails inside out and back to front. Slightly different car for this one. He was in his Maverick R the other day on 35 inch tires. This time he's putting his X3 back to work. And this has to have UTVs to be able to race in 4400. Have to have a different diameter um, tubes for their roll cage. And they also have to be fitted with a minimum of a 37 inch tire. 191 to main, 191 to main. Good, Terry. We're at the top of resolution now. I need you to look at the back of the car. We took a really cheap shot in the back. I need you to pay attention to the orange and blue new car right in front of us is so we can have a conversation later. We're going to need to adjust the shocks, they're bad in the rear, and the GPS is broke loose under the dash. The levers, tell my one to go all the way in on the levers, right in the rear, and then out a quarter turn, and then tell to take the blue screw in all the way, and out one turn. Okay. You can radio to them. Front and rear on the shocks, we want to go all the way in with the levers and then out a quarter turn. The blue screw all the way in and out a quarter turn. Is that right? Yep. All the way in. I heard blue screw all the way in. Here they are. Here they come. Out a quarter turn on the levers. Yeah. On the levers, too. No, we got blue yeah. screw all the way in. So that's out of the way. Yes. A quarter turn, go all the way in on the levers and a quarter turn back. All of it's all the way in. Right by the Maxis trailer here, guys. Right by the Maxis trailer. Left, left, left. Excellent. Who's doing the shock? Is someone doing the shock? Who's in charge of the shock? Figure out what the fuck's underneath the dash. It was that guy. We just the car that just came in. Who is that? That's the one that hit us. Nah, I ain't worried about. It. We just need to get this thing fixed. But I know there's definitely tension, you know, in the 4400 class, you know, with UTVs racing and just because UTVs never done great in 4400, but they do good enough to get attention. I feel like, you know, the Millers have finished top 10 a couple times and against big trucks and stuff that that's pretty good. But I don't know, to me, like I'm not racing those big trucks. Like I'm racing the dude that's driving that truck. I don't give a shit what the guy's driving. Like I just want to beat that dude like I don't care what he's driving I don't care what I'm driving like I want to win and I don't care what I'm in I just want to win Once we get to the rocks, you know, Terry Madden was my co-pilot for this race. When we get to the rocks and he's in the car, like I'm super confident. Like he gives me great confidence when I get into the rocks because I feel like it doesn't matter where I go, like he's gonna get me out of it. I feel like he's so good at winching and, and figuring out like if I would roll the car or something stupid, like he knows how to get it up right it. Good patience. <laughs> Way to make that your bitch, buddy. Well done. Well fucking done, Kyle. Thank you. That's the car that hit us. So, yep, that's him. It's the other partial car. I'm sure it's named Brat Harold. If we catch up to it, I'm gonna hit him too. I'm gonna hold in on that. All right. 
we start working our way through the rocks and we're passing some of the 4400s that are stuck or broke and we get to outer limits well before we get to outer limits you know i know we're running like top five somewhere and i see the helicopter sitting over outer limits just hovering there so i know something's going on in outer limits so once we get to the top of outer limits i see uh, rod Cade and and jason sure like, I don't know what happened, but they were stuck in each other. Ah, uh, shit, we got people in the way, winch Oh, there's trucks on both sides. Fuck. I was gonna go this way, but there's a truck there, too. What do we do? Is, is there a truck there? Or just yeah, there? there's a truck, I saw it. Oh, shit, he's fucked. Back here, back up. That dude's fucked. Go this way. Gotta find a way around them though. Fuck, is there any way we can drive through that? Uh, yeah, I wonder if. Here, get out. And we'll see if we can't winch that way. I'll go ahead and try it. Hey. So I had Terry get out, and uh, there's this rock pinch that I'd never even thought about going through before. Um, and that was our only option to go through. And you know, he he said, "Come on through." And it, it never even like registered in the back of my head like we couldn't do it. Just like he said, "Go this way." I went that way. So we ended up crawling over the, the back of um, one of the 4,400 cars and down in this little drop, and we about made it. We had to winch out of it a little bit, and then, you know, I knew after we made it through that, you know, we, we'd probably have a little gap behind us because they're probably gonna be, you know, a pretty good pile up there for a little while. So um, we just kind of ran our race after that. You know, I think we had one of the Gomez's pass us after that, but it was a pretty clean race and we were pretty much just by ourselves the rest of the time. On lap three, we're coming up this trail called Big Johnson. And I look up and one of the Gomez's is flipped over. And I know at this point we're third physically. So he's flipped over and uh, he's out of his car and he waves us by and says he's good. We end up going by him. I know at that point we're now second, you know, physically on track. And, uh, you know, I knew there was only two rock sections left, Outer Limits and Spooners. And, uh, but we still have to go by remote pit too. Yeah, look at that car just picking that little car through, threading the needle. Well, and when you're by yourself, if you, if, you, if you get to that point where you're just gonna force it a little bit, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't pay off. Mm -hmm. We dropped down the hill going to remote pit too, and uh, one of my guys radios to me and says, Curry's in the pit. He's been here for eight minutes and um, he's out of the truck you know, something with the rear end, and it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. And they're like, you're good, keep going. He's like, you know, you'll, you're physically first right now. So we drop into outer limits physically first. By this point, my front uh, shocks are completely blown. So I'm going real slow, trying not to top them out because I don't want the, the shock to, to pull apart. So I'm going real slow, trying not to top them out. And I hear a siren behind me right when we get to the bottom outer limits. And so I pulled over real quick and, and it's Lauren. And Terry's like, oh, that's, that's, you know, Lauren, he must be, you know, leading the race. I'm like, well, he, he can go because he was hauling ass. You know, he passed us going so fast through the rocks and then we turned to go up Spooners and he was freaking gone. We get up Spooners, we get to the desert and we can see him like three miles ahead. Like we can see his dust trail, like, man, he's, he's freaking on it. So we just kind of like 
tipping our way, like going real slow through the desert. And all of a sudden, I, I tell Terry, I'm like, I'm like, I, I can't go any faster. I feel like we're going so slow. And I tell Terry, I'm like, I, we can't go any faster because I'm going to break the shocks. He's like, do you think? And it wasn't five seconds later, the shock breaks. And uh, the front end falls to the ground. We're just plowing sand. And by this point, we probably have three or four miles left to go. So I'm like, well, I, I think we can make it. So we just keep going. And uh, we see Lauren broke on the side of the track. So Lauren Ely is currently our leader at King of the Hammers, but that's about to change as Kyle Cheney limps. And that's the only word you can use is limps past Lauren Healy. And that is the moment, ladies and gentlemen, that Kyle Cheney once again retakes the lead here at the 2024 Nitto Race of Kings. I'm so freaking nervous right now. He's lost his shock. Both of them or one? No, I think he's just lost the left front. There's, the right Both? shock can't hold the whole front end up. Compressed. It's just, he's just plowing. He's plowing saying he just passed Lauren. Uh -huh. Dude. So, if the race isn't hard enough, then you go from the lead, go 10th, work your way up to like third, then second, then lead, then lose the lead, and then back to the lead with a broken shot. He's time, to Terry, time to tell Terry to get out, hang off the back of that thing. Going up the rocks won't be a big deal. You can you can lighten it, but going down, it's a whole nother animal because it's trying to dive the whole time. Ugh. It was very stressful. Um, trying not to flip the car with no front shock. Um, it was, it was tough. Come on, dude. Hey, don't, you don't do that, oh. Let's go. Oh, yeah. That's classic. Kyle That's jumping classic. up in, Kyle going Come into on, the rocks. Son. Come on. Get that fucking thing through the finish line. All right, this Let's is go. It. This is it. Let's go, Kyle. Come on, buddy. Come on. This is some of the best driving you will ever see. We say that this man's a wheel man, but he's taking this above and beyond right now. He gets all the way here and he don't win this. I'm whipping somebody's so tail. There's going to be a riot. No, I'm like, <laughs> we're going to have to protest on something. And in a moment, he will be getting down to the split. Almost certainly he'll take the left line, and there he does. He takes the left line right now. And he's coming up over the top. There is now nothing, nothing other than sand and whoops between Carl Cheney and a place in history. Dude, I don't even think me and Terry said a word to each other. Like, I don't even remember talking. It was just trying not to flip the car and, and making sure we didn't get hung up or something stupid. And we ended up making it down resolution and, and into Hammertown and finishing physically first um, in the 4400 race. I didn't think that we had a chance of winning it. I just thought it was cool that we were able to finish first and, you know, be first in Hammertown and the excitement of everybody around them kind of made us believe that we had actually got that first place, but still were unsure with correct in time if we had possibly been bumped out in the second, which was still pretty exciting at the moment. You know, then they said that we, we might have won the race. They're looking into some, some penalties and stuff. Finishing physical first was a huge high. It was badass. But finding out what all the bullshit that went on, and all the politics, and then basically getting crushed and thrown out the door, that, you know, that hurts, but we weren't prepared enough for that race. You know, they want, they want people to watch these races and they want to make it dramatic and, 
I feel like on the live stream, they run out of stuff to talk about. So, you know, that they said, I missed two trails and I missed the same one in the UTV race. Well, we did, we did know where it was at. And you know, I know they talked about me missing it, but just because I was the main focus of the race, they didn't talk about half the, the other field that missed it. The first trail that they said we missed was at Uptown and that's the one I missed in the UTV race too. And so did, you know, a third of the other racers missed it too. And when you come around the turn, the main track turns. Well, I guess the other line that Dave had dropped into a wash, but then it connected to that same trail like 200 yards up. It wasn't even a rock trail, but we stayed on the main trail. And by the time you're coming around this turn, by the time the GPS tells you you're not on the line, you're already halfway through the trail. So it's like, you know, you're no more than 150 foot off. You're allowed 150 foot off each side of, of the line. So you did none of us even thought we were off the trail. Like we just thought it was, you know, another trail that was next to, you know, the main trail that was legal. Like every one of us that took it, I know nobody thought it was a, a, a cheat line. It was literally probably longer than doing, you know, the main line. The penalty they gave all of us was 21 seconds because they said that was the amount of gain from, you know, a fast guy taking the, the way I took and then, you know, another uh, average guy taking the uptown trail. And then they gave us all penalties times 10. So since it was 21 seconds, the amount of gain they said for me was 21 seconds. So they took that 21 seconds times it by 10. And that's why we ended up with, with like a three minute and 30 second penalty for that section, which I didn't even know where that section was. They told me they said it was by the fishing hole or something. And I didn't know, like, you know, after the UTV race, I'm like, okay, like I'll just make sure I tell Terry that we got to stay closer to the line, you know, once we get close to mile marker 100. I, I said, I didn't even know where it was at. And I told Terry, but he didn't know where it was at either. So in the 4400 race, we missed the same trail. And in 4400, we have to do that trail twice. So when we come into the pits after we missed it the first time, they come over and say they're going to disqualify us if we miss it again. And like, I don't even know where this trail is. You missed that BCP again. He said if you miss it one more time, left in that buffer. Bullshit! We went to it. We drove around. BCP. Same one you missed. We drove to it. Listen. If you look at the track. Hold on. Hold on. No, hey, come back here. Wait, wait, wait. Where is this BCP? We got a bolt. We got BCP 107. You have to stay to the right in the rocks. Not on the road. It's the same one you did in the UTV. Oh, 103, no seven. What trail? What's that mile 103? Uh, no. BCP 107. I want to say, is it uptown? Is that the end of it? I don't know what uh, uptown is. Whatever one I'd miss, I definitely hit today. I definitely did that trail. Terry, you need anything else? Liam, I, I don't know where I'm missing it. I'd love to know how. Well, when you're done, I'll show you exactly where it is. Okay. Yeah, but I don't want to miss it again. I wouldn't be missing it. Like, it's a 20-second trail. Like, it's not something that, you know, I'm trying to make a gain, you know, by going around it. It's not like a hard trail. So they gave us the exact mile marker. And when we got to it on lap three of 4,400, we missed it again. And, you know, luckily, when once we started turning right, Terry saw the line. And he's like, that's it down there. So we ended up turning left, you know, after we missed it and dropped down into it and, and drove it when, you know, I guess we hit the VCP that time. So yeah, about missed it again, even after I knew where it was at. So it's not like it was a really hard part of the track that, you know, shouldn't have been that hard. But the, my big penalty in 4,400 was from a rock pinch on check me out. So we did check me out. You know, I'd never pre-ran it before, but once me and Terry got up to it, um, you know, we didn't even know it, it was called check me out. But in the driver's meeting, Dave said all the bypasses were open. Somebody asked a question about a rock pinch and check me out. And Dave said, you have to stay between the two rocks. So, you know, I, I, I at that point, I'd never even been up the trail, so I didn't even know what he meant. But it was kind of just went in one ear and out the other. You know, I, I'm like, well, we'll just stay on the track and, you know, it won't be a big deal. So we get to that rock pinch, which I didn't know it was the rock pinch, and uh, we're going up, check me out, and there's the main line that goes left. Like it's burn in left, or, you know, and then there's the rock pinch to the right, which you couldn't even see it. It was just, there was two trails, and I just took the trail that, you know, was burn in, and it apparently that trail went around the rock pinch. 
So we hit the VCP and we were still within 50 foot of the line. So there was no penalty because we still did the trail. The trail was like two miles long. So we still did all the rocks in the trail except for that rock pinch. After the race, USAC comes up to me and says, I missed the rock pinch, but we're not gonna penalize you because you were still within 50 foot of the track. You hit the VCP, you know, you're still within all the rules of Hammer King. But they're like, if somebody files a red card, then we can go back to the driver's meeting where Dave said that you have to stay between the rock pinch. Somebody filed a red card, which is fine. I missed the rock pinch that, you know, I, sh I should have known to take. And so what they did was it was the same thing like the Uptown Trail. They took the average time through there and then times did by 10. Well, one of the guys flipped in it. So most of the guys made it through within a minute to two minutes. So it would have been, you know, a 15 to 25 minute penalty, which still would have had me in third overall. But one of the guys flipped and it was there for 24 minutes. So they uh, added his time in and with his time being added in, it took the amount of gain up to almost five minutes. So then that's how I got the 49 minute penalty. And it was literally by only missing 50 foot of trail. Like we, it was just one little pinch we missed. And, you know, like I said, it, it, it sucks, you know, knowing it now. Um, but, you know, it's, it's my fault for not putting in the time and the effort to that race to pre-run that trail. If we would have pre-ran that trail, I would have known. Um, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know the names of the trails. Like, like 4,400, like we definitely should not have been in front in that race. Like, we did not put in the work. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no excuses, but like, we shouldn't have been there. I, w I wish I knew what to say, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's hard when, when like, we didn't even go out there to win that race. Like, we literally just went out there to drive and finish that race and you know I never thought in a million years that we would be leading that race with the amount of effort that we put into it you know after thinking about it for a few days it's a big motivation because we didn't put in enough time with the 4400 car to finish how we did we're going to start putting the work in throughout this whole year and whenever we get time just work on what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Do everything we can to make sure that nothing is looked over and we have a 100% solid machine. The race course is just, you know, like second nature. There's no chance of anything, you know, possibly getting, getting around us or us get around anything and put in the work that it needs and just go out there and put it all on the table. I feel like we're all on the same page as where we want to win that race by a margin that nobody can even question. Now that I know that it's possible for me to win that race, and it wouldn't have been possible if the top guys didn't break. The top guys broke, which isn't how I want to win a race anyway, but they took themselves out of the race. So next year, yeah, I'm not gonna you know explain to everybody what I'm doing next year, but next year, let's just say I'm gonna be prepared for that race.